Hey, what's up? This is Kevin from Kevin's Barbecue Joints, and in this episode, I get a chance to talk to Daniel Castillo from Heritage Barbecue in Orange County. This one's really cool because I chat with him from, he's doing a stage at Brett's Barbecue in Rockdale, Texas. Brett's Barbecue recently opened, and he's uh, he's there for about a week, and it's, it's, it's cool because he's outside, and we get a chance to do a little tour. We see Brett, we see guys there. It's it's just before they're opening, and then we get a chance to, to talk to Daniel about his history and his background and uh, how he got to where he is today and what Heritage Barbecue is and how, why it's so special. It's Central Texas-style barbecue and they pop up at breweries around Orange County. But what makes it really, really interesting is that they incorporate beer from the specific brewery in all of the dishes for the pop-up. And it's, we go into depth about that. It's an interesting spin on Central Texas Star Barbecue, and it's uh, pretty fantastic. You, can, you have to go check them out. Uh, they do sell out, so get there early. I'll be posting uh, links to everything that Daniel does, so that way uh, you can make sure you can plan your schedule ahead of it. With Abe Delgado and I are, have been putting together a uh, barbecue pop-up guide for uh, Los Angeles, so if you do check out my blog at kevinsbbqjoys.com, you can see that it's a weekly guide, so that way you can check out all the different pop-ups that are happening, uh, happening around uh, Los Angeles and the area around it, too, and Heritage is always on that list thanks so much enjoy that's so cool is it cold <laughs> uh i think it's like uh i think it's about 50 something degrees right now but you know how it is i mean we're so used to 50 degrees you know, that's warmer. that's freezing for us it is yeah that's why i know the the first day uh that well my first morning i was here i went to uh walmart brett took me to walmart and i went and bought uh these insulated like bib overalls and uh, it was like overkill, and I showed up over here, and these guys are like, "Man, what the fuck are you doing? You don't, you look like you don't look like you're from around here, you know." And these guys are just in jeans and t-shirts, like no big deal, you know. That's so funny. It's so funny, like how yeah, how how sad we are. Like it's like from California, our, our blood is what really thin. Is that what it is? Is that what they say? Yeah, probably. Yeah, yeah. So there's <laughs> there's something going on. Well, cool. Well, right. that that's kind of a fun way to to, to jump into this. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so good morning, Daniel. How you doing? Doing, doing great. Yeah, we're just on a slight time difference, so uh, I'm used to it already. It's no big deal, you know. <laughs> so, where are you right now? You're in Rockdale, right? Yeah, I'm in Rockdale, um, which is uh, about halfway between uh, Austin and College Station, like Bryan area, I believe. Okay. Yeah, this is this is actually my uh, my second time out here. And this is your second day in Rockdale, or is this your? This is my in Rockdale. This is this would be my. Uh, officially my third day here officially your third day second morning third day second morning third day <laughs> exactly yeah. okay well let's 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 before because i want to talk because you're at brett's backyard barbecue which is really really cool and people will love to hear about that and, and maybe too at the end maybe we could do a quick little tour just so we can get a oh yeah of, yeah right? absolutely they're in there right now cutting briskets and uh getting ready to put them on the pit right now awesome Trimming Oh yeah, 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 that's awesome. So, so Daniel, let's let's talk about Heritage Barbecue really quick because what you're doing is, is something special, and I think people, yeah, I want it. So, can you explain what you're doing so people can know? Yeah, so uh, I'm doing Central Texas style barbecue in um, in Orange County area, and uh, we started off just doing kind of just like you know what everybody else does, and just doing the you know a couple sides and doing brisket and. Uh, uh, ribs and sausage and that sort of thing and uh, but I think we uh, I decided when I when I started doing this that I was going to eventually end up elevating the menu and kind of incorporating more of a taking more of like a chef twist on on the whole concept what is your background do you have a, a culinary background yeah yeah so I went to culinary school a while back I'm, I have about uh, 20 years experience in the kitchen in and out I think uh, one of my first jobs that I had was uh, working for uh, Mrs. Knott's Chicken Dinner Restaurant at Knott's Berry Farm. <laughs> I didn't know that. Oh, that's yeah, yeah. I used to fry chicken there, and that's kind of it's kind of weird. I've always really liked uh, Southern food for some reason. Isn't that funny? Like I have the same thing, and I'm from from the San Fernando Valley outside of Los Angeles, and I I have such a kinship for Southern food. Oh, there's a train going by right now. That's cool. That that, that actually doesn't happen a whole lot in Los Angeles either. Yeah, I know. It, it it gets really loud in my. Uh, I'm staying in this little loft. It's you can I can literally see it from here. Okay. And uh, that thing runs by all night long. <laughs> so it's going to get super loud here in like one minute. There's no train stop there, right? There's a lot of places to stop. Uh, I don't I don't know. I don't there think must so. be, right? It's just, Somewhere? It just zooms through here. <laughs> here it goes right now. 
Yeah, yeah that thing rumbles by. I can, it shakes my uh, little loft I'm staying in. I'm staying in a, a loft. Can you hear me right now? Yeah, yeah, I can hear you fine. Okay, yeah. I'm staying in a loft that's uh, above a little beauty salon right across the street from Brett's. <laughs> oh, really? Is that like is that like a place where he puts people up? Yeah, rural out here, you know, so you can see it in the background. It's... Oh, that's cool. But they're uh, they're going to clean this place up, man. They, uh, Brett has a lot of uh, lands for this place. Yeah, what's what? What are they gonna put in that area? In the in this back area, I guess the city's gonna come out and they're gonna get rid of all of these trees and this area, and they're gonna actually gonna do this like wrap around parking lot because there's, when you, there's oh, two okay. ways to get in here, but there's they're gonna pave that. They're gonna come all the way around. You're gonna be able to drive in. Oh. And they're gonna be able to drive all the way out. There's a convenience store, you know, like these convenience stores over here in Texas. A lot of them have places you can eat at, mm -hmm. which is, you know, back home we don't want to eat in any gas station no. it's it's it, yeah there's like a few places like there's a little taco place sometimes but like yeah, generally it's not now is that also too is that like one of those convenience stores where they sell uh beer solo beers by themselves yeah well actually this one's uh it used to be a, a chevron and uh the guy that owns this property he's gonna build it out into another gas station so i think they might have something kind of cool going on with uh concept because they have a little kitchen in there and stuff too oh, that's cool that'll be that make a little destination not that it's not yeah, this, already. he has a lot of plans for this place i know he was talking about uh doing some uh, breakfast tacos in the morning i mean because after they sell out there's still people they, they're coming all night long asking for barbecue oh. you know so he's gonna kill it when he's when he's able to to get this thing like rocking i mean the guy has a vision and it's he's just, been working it's just the beginning right yeah, he's he's doing, um, you know, he'll be cutting briskets and then he'll run out and, you know, go pick something up and go put it up and he'll be drilling something. And he's like constantly working on this place. You know, it's his baby. So and they add, didn't they just add something? I think I saw online there was something like they just added that covered area. Or yeah, so they just did this really cool. Um, I don't know if you could see it here, but there's like this uh, covered uh -huh. patio area, yeah, which yeah. is a game, which is a game changer because he said it's been raining pretty much once every weekend uh since he's been here since he opened uh, so i can only imagine i mean these guys gotta be out there you know throwing wood in the pit mm -hmm. and it's it's raining on them and uh yeah walking back and forth from the trailer in the rain and stuff so and also this during the summer when it gets hot it's gonna be nice to be covered yeah, come uh, come spring, they're all looking forward to that. Well, so let's jump back. So you're 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 doing you're doing fried chicken, Knott's Berry Farm. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just you know, honestly, uh, odds and ends jobs here and there, wherever I can work. If it was a kitchen, or you know, my wife was always kind of pushing me to go to culinary school, um, and I, I I didn't really want to do it. I I never thought I would end up in a kitchen, and a uh, couple. I think uh, I got laid off of one job that I worked at for uh for like two years and uh and she told me she's all just go back to school so i went back to school i actually got uh really good grades and got a lot of scholarships and nice. i was able to actually go to school full time and not have to work oh cool yeah which was awesome that's huge and, uh, yeah it was huge and um got that taken care of and then uh you know uh started working couple different restaurants and then i eventually went over to whole foods market and i worked there for like seven years oh wow yeah as a uh as kind of like a corporate chef and you know they had we had like a bar and grill and i got hooked over there it wasn't like working in a restaurant where you know you were working uh well we still we were working weekends and nights at first and you know and then i got some seniority there and uh eventually got to pick my hours and i was working you know like monday through friday uh, 6 a.m. to 2 p.m. and really good benefits and wow. uh yeah so i mean it was kind of hard for me to leave that situation yeah i know it sounds like, like a, it would be yeah even though it wasn't like a, a true restaurant the, you know it was just kind of i mean you couldn't beat it you know the pay was pretty good they kept giving me raises every time i wanted to walk out to go work in a restaurant <laughs> they, kept, they kept giving me a raise what got you what gave you the bug for central texas style barbecue oh so actually i just started by just doing barbecue like what we call barbecue in, in california which is you know, carne asada, you know, cooking burgers and, yeah. and ribs. I, I remember the first time I did a, a brisket and a butt, I actually cooked them at the very same time. <laughs> I had, I had like this R2D2 looking smoker that was, I, I think it was a, a Brinkford, a Brinkman. Brinkman. Oh, Brinkman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. And it's, you know, it has the bottoms hollowed out 
and I don't know. It had like a little tiny door where you just throw a little tiny piece yeah, of wood. Chips, and, like, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what I thought was barbecue, if I wanted to smoke something, you know, I'd get chips or chunks and I would soak them in like water or beer or wine or mm-hmm. something like that. And then, you know, just chuck them in there. And I thought the more smoke that came out, of course, that's what we all thought. The be- that's what we think, right? <laughs> that's, you know, that's what we think when we, when we first get into smoking, but it's not the case. Did you actually get a smoker before you started doing t- Central Texas style, or did you do it with somebody else? Or Yeah, I think uh, somebody gave me my first offset, which was, at the time, I didn't realize was a kind of a decent one. Um, I can't remember the, the, the brand name, but it was actually from Texas. It's the name of a town here. I can't, okay. I can't recall it right now. But uh, it, was a, it was a good one. It was a thick metal. You know, it was, it was a small cooker, but, you know, it was a, it was a good pit, and then... You know, I'd go on Craigslist all the time, and, um, you know, I used to have parties at my house and my backyard all the time, and uh, that was kind of another thing that really kept me out of, like, having a real, like, chef, chef job, was uh, on the weekends, I wanted to barbecue and hang out with friends and drink good beer and stuff like that, you know what I mean? So, yeah. I, I couldn't make that commitment to, you know, just, just run a kitchen, like, constantly. And, yeah, you'd be and away from that. You wouldn't be able to do yeah. that. Yeah that's not what I, I really wanted to do. And so I realized that, you know, if I could start doing it, my wife's like, stop giving away food to people. You got to start charging stuff. You know, and we were doing like beer can chickens and <laughs> I do Hawaiian barbecue. And then I started doing some catering on the side. And, uh, and, um, it wasn't until I came out here for my first time, uh, a few years ago that I really, it opened my eyes to what real barbecue is, you know, cause what was a restaurant that you went to? Oh, like a lot of people, Franklin's. Mm-hmm. That was like my first place I went to, and I was, you know, that's when I had my uh, my eye opening moment, you know. Um, and then I started going around to other places and and seeing that some of them were similar, but they did things differently. And uh, I think like if you go to like, you know, Terry Blacks or someplace like that, you're kind of you'll have the same experience that you'll have at Franklin's. Mm-hmm. Uh, Terry Blacks gets those long; they have the long lines too, but. Uh, you know, they, they're like cooking constantly around the so clock. Much, so much. Yeah. And, it, you know, if you don't get to have the brisket there at Franklin's or or whatever else that you wanted to get, you can go to Terry Black's and have just something just as good. Late in the uh, day, too. Yeah. Yeah. During the daytime, too. You know, you can go there if, if you can't make it to Franklin's, yeah. you know, whatever. But, uh, yeah. And then, uh, you know, came, I think that trip, we went to like eight different places and, uh, I don't remember where else we went to. We went to a couple of different spots in, in on the Austin area, and then I came back another time uh, with Yoni, uh, and uh, we went. He took me all over the place. Uh, we went up to uh, Belton, the Miller Smokehouse. We went out to Lexington yeah. first time. Knows, yeah, exactly. <laughs> Dusty. So when did Heritage start? Heritage started. Heritage. It used to be called Heritage Roasting Company before it was Heritage Barbecue. Okay. Uh, because we started doing catering and. Uh, we actually used to do a uh, whole hogs too. Oh, wow. that, yeah, we uh, the concept was didn't work out because you had to have a lot of people, and then you had to have people willing to pay for it. The concept uh, was just didn't work out. I, I couldn't find enough clientele for what I wanted to do, and I had one of those Cajachina cookers. Oh and, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and I I wrote a menu with like six different styles of, of way I can serve uh, whole hog. And uh, a little too complex for people, probably. Yeah, and then um, I came out here as soon as I got home. I sold it, and uh, yeah, I started working on. I I picked up a. Uh, at one time, I had like six bar, six offset smokers that were in my backyard, <laughs> and they were there rusting away. And they're you know most of them were just a cheap, thin still, you know, ones that you can buy from Home Depot. Yeah, you know, most of them actually were from Craigslist, just yeah. old used ones, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so when did you get your smoker? Um, so I uh, have a friend of mine. Uh, actually, it's, it's a long story, but it was kind of meant to be. Uh, I was on, I was on offer up, and I found I found a pit. It was a, uh, you know, like a Texas, you know, Franklin style smoker. Or, um, and uh, I wrote the guy a couple times, and he wrote me back once. And uh, it was a one. It was a 188 gallon offset cooker. Okay. And, uh, I was really interested. I was I was ready to pay for it. I had the money, and uh, he stopped writing me back. And um, I had put a post on Instagram um, asking if anybody knew anybody that uh, 
was selling barbecues or or knew how to build barbecues welders and stuff like that and uh one guy got back to me his name's matthew and he lives out in the inland empire he said hey i have a buddy i have a buddy of mine that uh that builds smokers and uh and so he's like i'll i'll tag you on his page so he tagged he tagged me on this page and then uh he uh uh, I saw one of the first pictures I saw was of that same smoker that was on offer of. Oh wow! So it kind of blew my mind. So I wrote the guy right away. And I'm like, hey man, I, I I was trying to talk to you on offer up, and you know, uh, I really want to buy that smoker. And he said, well, unfortunately, I already sold it. He's like, but I can build you another one. So originally we were supposed to get another. We were supposed to get 188 gallon. I ended up uh, going. He talked me into getting a 250. Gotcha. Did my, I uh, worked on that for a while, played around with some recipes um, till I, you know, I, I was satisfied with my product. Uh, brisket, I think my first pop up I did in my backyard was just brisket. Mm -hmm. And then I did some sides and um, that was about it. And uh, went out, got a couple gigs at some breweries, uh, decided that uh, that 250 wasn't going to work. I was already at capacity. I had, you know, started pulling lines with people and, you know, I didn't, there was no way. I mean, I can only do at the max with that thing full, like, like nine briskets. Oh, that was yeah, that's not enough. My, my airflow was all messed up and I wasn't getting the results that I wanted, you know? So that's when I had the, the 550 gallon built. Was the same guy? Yeah. Same dude. Yeah. He's, he, he's, he'll probably be the one that's going to be building my, uh, my thousand gallon. We're looking for a tank right now. What's his name or does you want, you want to publicize him? Or yeah. Yeah. He's, his name is, uh, Joey Cardenas. Uh, he's from, uh, Rooster's Barbecue. Okay. He actually does barbecue himself too. Oh, cool. Uh, uh, he's on Instagram, so if anybody wants to check him out, uh, he's a, he's a local guy. He's in Cyprus. Nice. Yeah, so he wasn't that far from me. And the guys, uh, also uh, another guy's named Shane. He's from Fontana. They actually, he's a metal fabricator, and uh, um, they built the pit out in Fontana. But uh, Joey, he for his daytime job, he works HVAC, so he kind of knows a thing or two about the flow of air. Oh, for sure, that makes sense. And that sort of thing. So that's how he was able to kind of bring that to the table. These guys are, are good, are good that, welders. That's awesome. So with with Heritage, it's what you do now is because you do a lot of pop ups at breweries. You incorporate the beer into your menu. Can you yeah, explain that absolutely. a little bit? Yeah. So the wife and I, uh, we we really love uh, craft beer. We've been going to all these local Orange County breweries for a while. They're such and great ones. Yeah. So yeah, absolutely. I, Orange County is making some of the best beer in the in the in the whole world right now. And uh, so anyhow, it, I was able to like pull those cards, you know, like, hey man, you know, I'm doing this barbecue thing, and you know, but I didn't want to be like a food truck. I didn't want to be uh, somebody that you know just showed up and you know just just stood there and, and sold food. Uh, you know, I wanted to uh, make an event out of uh, out of what we were doing. So. That's why I said, you know, I, I would talk to the brewers and became really good friends with a lot of the brewers and said, hey, if you guys are willing to um, offer up some of your beer that I can cook with, because pretty much anywhere that you would use a stock or use water, you could use beer. Yeah. So um, I started, you know, I've always been playing around. We used to do beer dinners at Whole Foods Market, so I would incorporate a lot of beer. Oh, that's the menu. Like what? Give, give some examples for people, like some examples as to what you how you incorporate the beer. So, uh, like, if I'm going to do, like, a polenta, usually you would start with, like, a little bit of, like, uh, simmering water or something. I would start with, uh, you know, maybe, like, a, like a, like a whipped beer or something like that. Uh, you know, whatever's going to work. What is it? Oh, they, one time, one of this brewery, they did a, a, like, kind of like a corn, a corn ale. And um, it just worked really well. A lot of, like, nutty, uh, That's sweet so flavor from the corn as it kind of reduced down. It just popped and it was perfect with the polenta so you also you also pickle stuff with beer yeah so we uh we do we make all our pickles and uh you know if we're gonna do like pickled onions or something if i could find a, a, a brewery that's doing like a goes that's made with like a raspberry or some sort of like tart tart berry you know it, it it'll add color i don't even have to use like a red wine vinegar oh, that's or true. Oh, yeah yeah it'll it'll uh eventually you know it'll actually eventually make it like a nice bright pink color and then bring those flavors of those those salty, briny flavors that you get with the goes into it. Um, IPA, I like using IPA for our pickles, and I'll use, uh, sometimes the brewers will give me, like, some of their hop cones or hop pellets, and I'll incorporate those into the pickles just to give it a more of a hoppier flavor to my oh, pickles. so great. Yeah, it's, 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 it gets really complicated. My wife tells me I make 
why do I have to make everything so complicated? <laughs> but, uh, but to me, I have to, I have to stay, uh, I have to stay busy. I have to feel like I'm, I'm doing something, um, in the kitchen, you know, just like when we run our pop-ups, I kind of run it like I would run a kitchen. You know, I want to, if I say that I need something, I, I want to hear that they're going to, that they heard me and that they're, they're, they're going to give it to me. So, <laughs> so is it a yes chef yeah. kind of thing? Exactly. It's not, it's, I don't make them call me chef, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Daniel. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay. Yeah. So, so the next, your next pop-up is January 27th? Yeah. So, uh, we will be at the, uh, Brewery Teru. Uh, that's in Anaheim. Uh, awesome brewery. Just yeah. A- it's, it's a, I mean, they're, their beer menu is, is crazy, and actually, if you get a chance to come out to that one, you'll, you'll get to see the, uh, uh, we, we sat down with them, and we came up with some logistical things on how to make this line move, and we came up with these oh, this, cool. these menus that are going to hopefully make the line uh, uh, move really cool, and it's not something that I'm going to post up, because I don't want anybody to steal it. Okay, awesome. Well, yeah, no, no, I want... But if you... But if- want to see what it looks like you'll have to come out uh, <laughs> okay cool so. that's and, and and you're incorporating beer into your entire menu essentially oh, yeah. everything will have beer in it yeah except for the brisket but you'll drink drink beer with it well it'll, it's actually the brisket will be sprayed with uh with beer oh that's so cool that's awesome yeah it'll be in, it'll be in my my spritz for sure oh that's awesome cool so uh, i just wanted to tell you real quick about brett's um the yeah. food here is fantastic man uh so you're out here. You're out here to kind of stage, or yeah. So that's exactly what I'm doing here. I'll, I'll be here for a solid work week, and uh, and uh, this guy. I mean, he's been winning competitions forever. He's been he's been barbecuing for more than a lot of people that have restaurants. Without a doubt, in Austin, and he and he knows what he's doing. And you know, I, he made such an impact on me the last time I was here when I tried his food, and uh, I was like, wow, man. You know, people need to come out and try this, and I need to learn how to cook this type of barbecue. And so, so did you? Re- and how did that work out? You just re- reached out and, and said, "I want." Yeah, so I I I, uh, I met with him, and it was very briefly because he was cutting in the trailer last time I was here. But I, you know, I talked with uh, Rossler and Fernando, and we, you know, they, we hit it off. And the guys over here are so cool. I just knew that uh, that you know, I had to try to come back here. So I wrote him on Instagram, and I, I kind of just told him what I thought, and and he, I don't know if he if he thought I was serious at first. <laughs> he you probably know, but, did. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure yeah, they get, I'm like, sure they get a lot of requests. Yeah. Uh, so I actually wrote a couple different places too, and got some got shut down. Some people never responded to me, but you know, thank God Brett was a, was a nice nice enough person to, you know, offer his time to me because I know he's he's super busy and, you know, so I try to just work as as hard as I can for him. You know, I'm not, I'm not just here just, you know, tending fires and yeah. and uh, and you know cutting briskets and stuff like that. I'm I'm washing dishes. He'll do whatever, you know, whatever, whatever he needs me to do, just so I can show a little bit of. Uh, thankfulness for and you're filming on, a, on this is this is a friday so this is a so what time do they open 11 Zero. they open at 10 30 oh 10 30 okay and then there's people here and then even after he long after he sells out there's still people waiting in line well do you want to do you want to do a little tour i want to do, do sure yeah hold on a second here so there's really people here that's cool it's cool to see So this is all new here. They they did this. Uh, oh, that's what I saw. Okay, that's great. Yeah. There's <laughs> night moves. <laughs> nice the clout. There's a the man right there getting ready. Hey, what's up, Brett? Kevin. <laughs> How are you doing? He's busy. He's busy. Yeah, yeah. Mando. What's up? Hey, what is up? Yeah, these guys are getting ready to open right now, so they're really busy. But uh, yeah, I think uh, this location that he chose is is such a great place because it's halfway between uh, Bryan, like College Station, Texas A and M area, uh, to Austin, and so you know it gives people a chance to stop here. Not only that, but between uh, um, Snows and uh, and uh, Louis and Mil- Louis, Mil- Louis Miller, yeah, it's close to Louis Miller, right? Yeah, so you can you know if people are doing a, like a little barbecue crawl, they could stop by here Perfect. and try. Some of the- Try some of the best barbecue in Texas Grill. I'm like, <laughs> and, and and where and where is the um the parking lot? Is it do you park right next door? Is that kind of where? Yeah, there's actually there's like this little like dirt area right here, but on the other side there's a paved area where that gas station is. And that's the same dude that owns this property. So okay. people can park there, yeah. Wow, that's awesome. So what are you serving today? You guys have a brisket, pork uh, ribs, yeah. sausage. Yeah, he's got he has brisket, uh, ribs, he's got chicken, uh, four different types of sausage. Wow. 
Yeah. What are those and, sausages? Uh, which ones are they? Do you know? Off oh, he has he has what they call pico de gallo, which I never heard of before, but it, it's real similar to like a, a chorizo sausage. Oh, okay. And it's 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 insane. It's really good. I think it's like chopped up Fresno chilies in there, and oh, you know, like, the, like sweet paprika. Uh, it's it's so it's so good. It's ridiculous, man. And uh, yeah, it, everything that he makes is is fantastic, man. And what about that dessert? Isn't there an amazing dessert? Um, on the weekends they do dessert and they do free beer, which is awesome. Wow. But isn't you know, it like, like some kind of like nutter butter or some kind of like, uh, uh, I think he, I think he has somebody, uh, I think it's his, his girlfriend that's making a, a really killer, um, banana pudding. Banana and pudding, yeah, with... yeah. People have been coming by here and they, they say, Hey man, I need that banana pudding. And he's like, sorry, man. It's only on the weekend. Okay, cool. That's good to know. That's, that's actually really good. You, you just gave a scoop that, that people, might yeah. a tip. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Well, that's awesome. So you're going to be there through, what, Tuesday? I'll Wednesday? be here. Uh, there's supposed to be a cold front that's coming in Saturday. So I might going might be going back to town uh, either uh, Saturday night or uh, or Sunday morning. Okay. Wow. Yeah, because I got I to gotta fly out of Austin. And I have to figure out how to get back over there because I Ubered to Rockdale, which is an hour away from Austin. And, uh, and I checked to see if there was Ubers going back. There's no Ubers going back. <laughs> how much was that Uber? Oh, uh, it was about a hundred bucks. <laughs> it's worth it. But I mean, I was going to be here for, for seven days, just sitting, the car would have been sitting, it would have been a waste of time. It, for it didn't make sense. Car. Yeah. Yeah. That paid for it. So, so I got to, I got to see if I could hitchhike over to, uh, over to a Taylor, which the, where, where there is a uh, Uber drivers to, to get back into Austin. Or if you could somehow get into like Round Rock or something, maybe. Yeah. Round Rock. Yeah. Cause Fernando lives in, in Round, Round Rock. So he said. You know, he could drop me off there and I could Uber from. Uh, for sure, yeah. That's a much bigger town. Well, that's cool. Well, D Daniel, thank you for taking the time. And, and I've wanted, we've wanted to do this for a while. And it's really, what you're doing is something really special. And now it's even more special because you're getting these these tips from someone that's a great barbecue chef in, uh, in, in Rockdale. That's awesome. That's really cool. Yeah, yeah that's, this is my plan is to come out here. I Actually, I think in another two months, I'm going to come work with somebody else. Nice. That's great. For, that for... that works works out. Get that knowledge. That's there's awesome. always there's always something to learn, and, he, yeah. and he, a lot of these guys too, especially Brett. They're they're constantly you know trying to make it better. Yeah. He's he's like me. We're just we're never satisfied with our product. That's awesome. We'll we'll say hello to, to Brett again, and and I thank, will. thank him for letting me steal you for a little bit. All right, brother. All right, take it easy. Thanks so much, Daniel. See you later, man.